this is my newest work, Andy Foresaw It All. There's a bit of irony in that title. And originally, uh, this started as a graphic for a blog post I'm writing about a connection between Andy Warhol and Donald Trump. Not to malign Andy too much in this, but there is a connection. Here's the original graphic I made. I got a picture of Andy holding a TV set off the internet, and I put Donald in there. And then I made it black and white. Uh, I did this because when you look at the original color version, um, Donald's face is much more clear than Andy's. And Andy should be more clear than Donald, really. Not that it matters for a graphic for an article of art criticism, but I liked it enough, I wanted to push it. There's something interesting about it. So first I made it black and white, so uh, I could just work on the composition and things more, and a lot of those old pictures of Andy Warhol are black and white anyways, and it has a kind of iconic quality, so I did that. So let's see some of all these layers of things I added, what I was up to here. Uh, oh, that's, here we go. I added a different Andy on top of it. Notice he doesn't have glasses, but in the final one, he does. So the glasses come from somewhere else. So I, I chose this other picture of him, which has this wonderful crooked bow tie. And see, this layer underneath was just because the original head was broader, so I had to hide that. And some of the little effects I added here and there. Some background. I don't even remember what that background is. More of it. Ah, notice this skull appearing in the upper middle. It's a little subtle. I like that skull. Uh, maybe that portends some not so great things. And uh, Andy did some work about death and terrible car accidents and some suicides and things, so it's a bit fitting. Uh, some levels adjustments, curves. What's this? Uh, another copy of the that portrait of Andy and bringing it out a bit. TV antenna. And this is in vivid light mode. You have the different, many different modes you can put Photoshop files in, each layer in, and I love to play with those. And what would the normal mode look like? Uh, eh, I like the vivid light because it looks sort of transparent and like a, um, a technical drawing, which somehow seems appropriate for Andy. Little more shade on the background. There's a fly. Look at that. Uh, the fly is almost as if it's on, on your own monitor. It signals the flat picture plane. And it kind of looks like Donald's pointing at it. Uh oh, wait. Fly's moving. Uh oh. Uh oh, Donald. Let's put him back. <clears throat> uh, some other subtleties. <laughs> okay, these dots are actually taken from a Warhol film. They're in subtract mode, but if you put in normal, uh, at not 13%, but 100%, you'll see these white dots you might recognize from some of his early films. Just threw that in there. What mode was that in? Damn, did I forget? Screen, soft line, looks kind of good, but I think it was exclusion. So let me see, there we go, subtract, looks good. I like that. So you can see here, it looks like a hole in some wall by the sea. You've got this ocean with spray. Glasses. There is glasses. I nicely selected those. And they're on their own layer now. So, without, where is he? Without glasses and with glasses. 
wonder how Trump would look with glasses. Let's see. They're a little too big for him. Let's put those back on Andy. And Vestimont en Francais. That's the name of the lair. Uh, I don't know why. I just entertain myself. This is just putting this fabric because it's multiple suit. I decided to make this corner shoulder into like a real thing. So the Vestimont, I put the uh, clone of the fabric from the main jacket onto there. Also onto this other part of his jacket over on the left. Make it all match. Some retouching. This blob on the side of his head is now gone. And that's the mold. And here is a uh, color addition, which I think helps a lot. This off green seems like you're looking at an old black and white TV set. When I was growing up, I had a black and white TV set until I uh, was 18, and then I had no TV set. And here, a little, a little darker, just an effect. And this is from another file where I put it all together and did some final touches on top. So let's look at it without distractions here. There he is. And the idea about this is Donald Trump likes to quote Andy Warhol's statement that making money is art and business is the greatest art or the best art, which is kind of bullshit when you think about it. When we talk about art, we tend to think drawing and painting and sculpture. So when you say business is the best art or making money is art, all of a sudden it's Making money is a higher art form than painting. But this is ridiculous because they're completely unrelated. If you said making money is the best form of music or poetry or dance or literature or film, it would be absolutely ridiculous. And if you said it's the best form of painting, it would be ridiculous as well. But when you use art generally in its... Uh, historical context and contemporary art movements and conceptual art, which is where Andy's coming out of, leading back to Duchamp, art replaces painting to a large degree. It's a different kind of art, conceptual art, appropriation. The author is dead, the originator is dead, painting is dead. That's why these artists appropriate from popular culture, which Andy really did with his soup cans and Brillo boxes and silk screenings. So there's this connection between these two characters, and they did meet each other. And I'm writing about this in a blog post, so I won't go into it much more, but this thing where Trump references Andy, and Andy in some uh, tangential ways makes room for Trump. Andy's an a, a innovator of reality TV, and Trump's a star, and Andy is a celebrity made himself a celebrity, so did Trump. There's some connection, not just the giant hair, some cultural overlap between the excesses of a certain kind of conceptual art tied in celebrity, money, uh, and being anti-art, anti-artist, a connection with that, and a uh, celebrity like Trump. Just a little something I want to point out so we can perhaps reel back the excesses of that particular paradigm and allow a little bit of traditional painting and those sorts of artists to have some validity and some breathing room to make art as well. Let's, hey, let's zoom in as long as we can. Hello, Andy. Ah, what a character. Apparently, he was uh, extremely shy about his looks. I'm, I'm in the middle of a super long documentary. I like to be open-minded and not too dismissive of Andy. Um, but uh, I don't see anything wrong with the way he looks. I, everyone keeps emphasizing how ugly he is and stuff. Uh, he looks better than Trump. I mean, it's, uh, even his hair is better. Trump might learn something. So I, I particularly like this bow tie. And one of the things I like about this image is it has that iconic quality, you know, uh, Andy Warhol photo. 
But it's one, it doesn't exist, it's composite. So it has this strange little bit of authority, the creepy skull in the background. And Donald Trump, this is maybe my favorite part. When you look at him, he looks like he is at the most recent contemporary with this photo of Andy Warhol. Trump has this wonderful 50s look. He looks so antiquated. He is a living dinosaur. And uh, just uh, about the ocean waves, I think that gives it a dreamy feel for me. Maybe I have a lot of dreams being from California about oceans and waves, and uh, some of those are nightmares of uh, tsunamis. But I, I often I like the the surf, and I've had dreams about it. It's always a great place to go in my dreams, and I didn't get to go there enough when I was a kid living in L.A., maybe once every year or two, and it was just something I loved the idea of. But it is dreamy, so it's part of this, as if you saw this scenario or tableau in a dream. Thank you for watching this video.